Hello everyone, it's Maxine. I'm going to do another get ready with me. And today I'm going to do um, five positive and five negative. Today I'm going to do five positive and five ne negative aspects of working for those popular delivery corporations as a delivery driver. I mean, this is only one of the many from my experience, but I'm sure they're quite a lot alike. So, and um, I'm sure just by me discussing things, you might gather which one I'm talking about. <laughs> Yes, five positive and five negative aspects of working for major delivery companies where, you know, it's a high volume of parcels every day. Like my usual was usually between a hundred or 90 to 115 stops roughly, but that could be, um, you know, 150 to 200 locations or more. Like sometimes it's one stop with like three different places to go. Oh wow, there's someone swimming in there. <laughs> it's January and in BC, but the weather, you know, we had snow for like one whole week and that's it. And now the weather's pretty good, but somebody's swimming. <laughs> I need to do that. It's very ther therapeutic. The Sea water is so awesome, like salt water and cold water is good for you and anyway, and it helps with a whole bunch of things like skin issues and whatnot. But yeah, so here we go again. Oh no, where that came from. Um... Yeah, let's start with positive today. So this was me, um, you know, three months in. And it really, the thing about delivering for these companies is things aren't going to change. So I'm pretty confident in saying, like, like I know what I'm talking about. And I, I made the decision to leave. So I could have gone on with that company for years, I guess, if I wanted, if, you know nothing no issues arose but um <laughs> today I just feel like I want to do my makeup and then talk about this and not <laughs> no one's forcing me to do this I just thought some people like to see the transformation <laughs> so okay I wrote them down because obviously I'm very scatterbrained and I'll just elaborate on each one. So of course, number one is easy. Like it's an easy job. It's straightforward. You get to work, you do your vehicle inspection, you wait in line, you go pick up your parcels, you load your van, you follow GPS all day and you bring the parcels to the door and there's very little um, issues with that. Like looking back on it now, I think I could have saved myself some time at times where if people aren't answering, for example, at an apartment, you just take it and go. Like you don't need to be wasting like 10 minutes if someone's not answering the buzzer if you're trying calling the customer's number, like, I think what a lot of people do eventually is they sit, cut some corners and save time. And so kind of like what they say in training doesn't exactly go match up with what people do in reality. And even your managers or supervisors will tell you just to like not waste more than two minutes. So yeah, and then when you're done, you bring your whatever parcels are remaining back with you and then you do it all again the next day. And it, <laughs> it 
So yeah, easy, straightforward. The good thing about that is like, if you, you know, if you do have some disabilities where, or memory problems or, you know, ADHD, like I do, um, jobs like that are helpful because you're not, you know, it's not like a life or death scenario. And, um, so there's like a little bit of ease with that, knowing that like not a lot can go wrong. Well, I mean, you are driving all over the city, so you have to be confident in your driving ability and you have to probably have a good driving record. And I do. And, uh, you know, that can be life or death if you're being careless on the road. But anyway, so easy, 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 easy. <laughs> Next, of course, is money. Um, They do have a pretty good starting wage. Like most of them are above 20 to start, like under 25 an hour, at least in Canada or at least in BC where I am. And uh, I turned down a job actually right after I quit and I applied for another like competitor. Um, I quit because I think it was like a $3 per hour bonus, which brought the the hourly, wa hourly wage <laughs> under 20 an hour. And I thought, oh, I've worked for companies where they'll just do or say anything to take your bonus back from you. Like, so I'm like, oh no, I'm not working there. I'm not going to be like driving all day long, dropping off parcels for minimum wage. Like that's a bit, you know, you are putting your life on the line because like when you're on the road, you can be as safe as humanly possible, but there's always others who are potentially putting your life at risk. So yeah, I was like, that's not happening. I'm not going to work for less than what I was making. So, um... But yeah, so I was making, you know, it's consistent. They're not like every day, regardless of how busy it was, you're getting your hours. But I'll discuss the negative aspect of that a little later um, and how you can kind of rip yourself off if you don't take some like steps. So, um,. Next is independence, like, it's really awesome, um, just being on your own, like, like what I said before about, you know, you don't have to see your coworkers, you don't have to see your boss very often, like, 10 minutes at the beginning of the day, 10 minutes at the end, I said that in a way where it's like, I don't like people, like, I do like people, I've had a lot of jobs where I'm interacting with people, I had a home daycare for four years, like I said, I love kids animals I think I'm just a little bit weary because I've just had a lot of really bad experiences being a disabled person in many different places the worst of all was the food and s beverage industry just a lot of um judgment because I was even though I was like 70 pounds lighter than I am now I was still the bigger girl, even though I was like curvy and muscular and like, you know, 10 years later, that's kind of like the standard what, I mean, I wasn't ideal. Like I definitely had some weight to lose and I wasn't like working out consistently. Like I always had a bit of a stomach, but, um, I was curvy, like small ways, big, but like, <laughs> and but back then, it's like everyone, you, you know, you were just either fat or skinny. Like, no in between, no one really considered, like, curvy to be ideal. And this wasn't that long ago, but there's definitely a lot more bossy, body, whoa, <laughs> bossy, <laughs> body positivity today. And, uh... Anyway, so back to independence, I was just saying that I can work jobs where I'm interacting with people. I can work jobs where I'm taking care of people. It's just that in my experience, I decided that from daycare going into something, I wanted something that was going to be independent on my own, 
where, you know, no, I just, it's me, myself, and I, just to at least give it a chance. And I really do enjoy it, and that's why I stuck with it, and then I found this <clears throat> other job that's similar to what I was doing before. And, uh, yeah, um... So, you know, when you're just on your own schedule and you don't have to wait for anyone and you're just, you know, you can play your music and you just have, to, you do have a lot of time to think though, too. So to yourself, you have a lot of time stuck in your own head. So that kind of goes into the negative category where it, it could, you know, if you have trauma in your past, like I do, sometimes those things would kind of come on and. And then, you know, some, oh, well, we'll get into that later, but <laughs> positive. <laughs> so, uh, I kind of was adding that maybe it's a good idea for people who are kind of like me, like, or autistic and you have a lot of sensory needs. So we're talking smells, sounds, um, you know, interactions with people where they're treating you unfairly and, um, you know, so having a job like this where you don't have to face that daily like bullying or you don't have to worry because you're not going to be spending very much time. And I did like my coworkers, like I actually enjoyed chatting with them before hitting the road, but I enjoyed that time in the morning to like get my coffee and say hi to my friends. It felt like, but, um, after that you're on your own. So I just think it is a good job idea for people like me or if you've had those experiences where it's like you're just so scared about getting back into the workplace because you're fearful of how you're going to be treated. <laughs> okay, woo! So next, um, I guess that's money, independence, easy, good for some disabled people and fifth is fresh air and sunshine like I've worked jobs where I'm inside when going inside it's still dark outside leaving when it's getting dark outside again so it's like you're getting no sunshine <laughs> and fresh air you're just cooped up indoors all day so having a job where you're like outside getting vitamin D but then and on the other hand like I have very sensitive skin so in the beginning oh my god like I know I already have rosacea and I probably should be avoiding the sun I'm sure that's what they tell you but uh in the beginning I was like red like a lobster but then eventually my skin calmed down a bit and it adjusted sometimes like in life this is another tip like you just need to adjust there's an adjustment period. Like for example, I didn't have cats for a few years after having cats like my whole entire life. And then when I got my two kittens, Bubba and Ninja, the first day I was having like really bad reaction. Like my nose was running, my eyes were watery. And that's obviously an indication that I'm allergic to cats. And I was feeling so sad, like, oh no, I don't, I was like already emotionally invested and attached to them after like one day. And I, anyway, I gave it overnight and the next day I was completely fine and then haven't had a problem since, except one thing I know to do is not to pet them and like go rubbing my eyes. Like that sometimes causes a reaction. But so for anyone out there, if like, you know, you're in a relationship or you, um, like you're in some sort of situation where you exposed to cats and then you think you're allergic or a past experience um sometimes you just have to give your body the time to adjust to the histamines or antihistamines whichever one I can't remember that your body creates to protect yourself from the allergy so I think there's a lot of people out there who immediately think oh no I'm allergic and that's it but if you give your body time then you might not need medications or you might not need to like pass on that second date or whatever <laughs> oh my god I'm thinking about a time I hung out with this guy <laughs> and <laughs> he 
was having like really bad allergies. <laughs> like, I mean, not like where he's like having trouble breathing, but he's just like, his eyes are red and watering and his nose is stuffy and he's talking different because he's congested and stuff and he's just acting like oh no it's fine like he didn't leave right away so I just find that so funny <laughs> like I guess I uh he was either that nice or he enjoyed spending time with me enough <laughs> that he was willing to go through allergies anyway um <laughs> next so on to the negatives so i got through the five positives money independence fresh air sunshine easy and good for some disabled people if they think that there's nothing out there for them now on to did i say negative i meant positive anyway on to the negative <laughs> So, you know, for this job, I'm sure there is some flexibility if you talk to some companies, but with this one, they wanted you to work 10 hours, four days a week. And that might not work for everyone's schedule. You have kids. There's a chance that with some companies, you might be able to like do five days a week for eight hours, or you might even be able to do less and work six or seven days a week I don't know for sure but they want you to do four days ten hours and they want you to do even more than that at some point because they most of them have a high turnover rate so if anything they'd love for you to work more but um so yeah that is another positive too like if you want to work more and then you're going to be getting overtime so that's pretty cool Okay, but with that, like I said, not everyone's going to be able to do 10 hours, four days a week. And, you know, on those occasions where you're busy, it is pretty hard on the body. Like, you're going up and down, depending where you live. Like, I live in a very hilly mountain type of location where, like, some homes are up, like, a hundred flights of or a hundred steps and then you're carrying this gigantic box and um, a dolly can only help you so much in some situations. So eventually you're going to get really strong. That's one thing. So another positive, but um, you know, you can't shy away. Like, I don't know what I was thinking when I applied, but I didn't think it would be as hard as it was in the very beginning like but I was like also very out of shape I hadn't been back at the gym I hadn't been back at work in a while like walking the dogs obviously wasn't enough to prepare me for this job and I'm overweight of course so there was an adjustment period but eventually like I was actually and I have fibromyalgia so that's another thing like I was kind of really worried that but I kind of thought about it and so jobs where I'm sitting all day cause me pain and agony like I get numb limbs or tingling and like from not having circulation and all of that like sitting all day isn't good for me and then if a job's extremely physically demanding like I went to school for massage therapy I didn't get to finish if I had to do that I mean well once you graduate you can decide your own schedule but if I had to do a job like that for eight hours a day I'd probably be in a lot of pain and agony and not be able to continue on or I wouldn't make enough money doing that so <clears throat> um but yeah so Oh yes, that is, so yeah, it's physically demanding, so you have to be prepared for that. Like, you can't go in with, like, real severe back issues, leg, what, arm, whatever, neck, whatever it may be. You can't really get away with doing a job like this if you have those things. Unless, like, for me, what I was trying to get to is that, so sitting all day is bad, two physicals bad, but this was the perfect balance for me. So you're driving... You're getting out, you're going up the stairs, you're coming back, you're driving, 
sometimes there's like a f up to five minutes usually not so much but up to five minutes between each stop so it's like the perfect balance of building up your tolerance and strength and um not just being like go 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 the whole time but of course with that the negative like the extreme temperature fluctuations and stuff too can be hard on you like whether it be really cold or really hot raining like you're out there all year round like rain or shine so you have to consider that if you if you want your hair and makeup to look good <laughs> from morning to night and effortlessly well you can't work a job like that and stay perfect you have to be willing to get dirty too oh my god i didn't include that in my negative but my hands would be like black from the parcels like the boxes because they're like on the conveyor belt and going all around and they're just fucking oops really dirty so and you know i'm obsessed with like washing my hands so that's something i had to get over really quick but So I think I'm going to do purple today. I'll do like B4 and then this E5 shimmer. And uh, whoop. so back to my list. So as I was saying with my fibromyalgia, it tends, to, it worked out pretty well for me because in the beginning it was rough, but eventually I just wasn't willing to quit. So I got stronger and eventually my symptoms lessened because it was just the perfect balance of sitting, lifting, bending, and being active and not sitting all day or being too active all day. Well, it is maybe too much for some, but for me it works out because I'm not on medication yet. Like I've refused medication, even though I've lived, lived with a lot of array of different pain a lot of my life. I'm just not willing to take that step. For me, like, I'm not a doctor, I'm not telling anyone else to do, but for me, medication really just feels like a death sentence. Like, it feels, I'm very fearful of the side effects, and I know that it can affect your gut health, it can do this, it can do that, and so I've always managed to just, like, push through, like, in regards to my physical and mental health without medication. So I've always tried to find a way, whether it's meditation or just reaching out for support or doing things to take care of myself. Um, Self-care, like, learning to say no and learning to, like, listen to your body and, and you know, quitting all the quitting all this shit and bad habits like drinking and stuff like that really like wreaks habit on your body so where was I um oops no stay like yes of course I have I still have a sugar addiction so having my iced coffees and having desserts and having well that's a video for another day because like I have like literally beaten my eating disorders like ever since I was a teenager I developed eating disorders like big or small in my life I've had eating disorders and for a full year now I've gradually lost weight I'm almost down 40 pounds from my heaviest and completely natural and completely balanced like no, it's not perfect all the time. There are, I could have lost weight a lot quicker if I had done things healthier, but I'm doing it completely guilt-free where I'm like not hurting myself. I'm not feeling bad. I'm just trying to make it an overall lifestyle change so I can take it off long-term. I've kind of been at a standstill lately and I have been overindulging lately and it, it does make me worried because I worry about getting diabetes. So... It's something I definitely have to nip in the butt soon because I'm starting to just feel the effects of, well, putting back on weight a bit or being around the same, but like losing muscle and then gaining fat clearly because like I was this exact same weight three, four, no, 
four or five months ago and I or anyway around the time that I quit the job and I looked completely different like well I definitely had more muscle and stuff so yeah I've lost muscle and gained fat I guess so that's why I'm balanced but okay anyway that's yeah like I said I'll have to make a note of that to discuss it my eyebrows are looking a little better today each day they've gotten a little bit better and they actually are growing back but yeah, uh, next is road rage. So the five negative things I talked about, the 10 hour, four day work week, physically demanding. Now road rage. So, I mean, you have to be honest with yourself. If you have road rage, it's maybe not the job for you, but it's for me, I didn't have that, but it was the way other people reacted. Like sometimes people were just like really nasty. It's like, I literally am jumping out, I'm putting the parcel at the door and back within 30 seconds and these people are acting like you, like they're on the way to the hospital every single time. Like everyone's like so inconvenienced by like 10 seconds to 30 seconds of their life. Like it's just <laughs> really irritating. Like some people are just extremely entitled. It's like, well, I'm sure you don't mind getting your parcels delivered to you, do you? So like, can you have a little patience and understanding for the people out there like you have no idea what they have to deal with all day and anyway so um yeah so just be mindful that there's going to be people out there who are trying to ruin your day because I guess they just feel really bad about themselves or I don't know like what the reason for I mean, yes, people are in a rush and maybe there is an emergency sometimes, but not every time. Like there's some people who, whoa, <laughs> oh, <laughs> there was a seagull up there. I wish I had gotten that on video, but I scared it and it flew away. <laughs> I'm being a little bit of a, trying a little harder today. They probably saw all the colors on my palette and thought, ooh, fast food or something. <laughs> wow, this palette's been sitting in my car, but it's really nice formula. Like, it blends really nice. The pigment is there. I believe it's, well, it definitely has to be cruelty-free. And it's vegan, so that's awesome. Way to go. Um... Norvina, <laughs> I think. I think she's like the daughter of um, Anastasia Beverly Hills or something. I don't really know. I don't really follow all the beauty gurus. Because I got like so into Jeffree Star's makeup and then I just kind of like really got let down by some of the things that he said, especially in regards to trans people. So I just, I was like, okay, I am not putting any effort into like caring for celebrities or beauty gurus or stuff anymore. Cause it's like, eventually you're gonna find out something and it feels like your hero or something <laughs> has like let you down. Like everyone's gonna have a difference in opinion and stuff sometimes, but I, like when it comes to human rights and that type of thing and it's like who are you to say that like so only you are allowed to dress like a female half the time but because you identify as a man then that's okay but it's not okay oh no it was the non-binary thing actually not transgender I take that back like um I think that's what he was making fun of non-binary like there's absolutely nothing wrong with that like you're kind of just breaking the mold or society's standards like you don't have to fit into a category you don't have to liking barbies doesn't make you a girl liking 
dressing like a guy doesn't make you a guy. Um, you can feel like both. You can feel like perfectly balanced masculine feminine or whatever it is. I don't actually I haven't looked into it more about like what it really all stands for, but I still respect anyone who like if that's how they want to live and how they want to be identified. I think that's fine and I think it was non non-binary he had the issue with, maybe not trans. I don't know. Yeah. But either way, there was a couple of things and the yak farm. I really had a problem with that. But anyway, I need to get off that subject. So back to <laughs> negative with uh I'm getting carried away and then this is getting carried away. Well, back to that just a little bit, but it's like make it make sense. Like so you're the only boy out there who's allowed to dress like a woman at times and like you wouldn't consider that non-binary because like you don't identify as a woman but you dress like a woman sometimes are you saying that it's like completely a character like you were in a relationship for a while where you pretty much solely dress like a woman and now you're kind of like going back to your masculine energy so in a way it's just really strange to um just kind of like gatekeeper act like other people aren't allowed to be who they are. It just is very strange. Like it's kind of like trying to gain followers of all the people who hate non-binary and then it's like keeping your loyal followers who feel hurt by that but they still love you and your brand so much that they're not like gonna turn their backs on you. That's kind of how it feels. Okay, so back to negative. The next was van conditions. So I kind of went off on that um, in another video about the conditions of the van. I don't really want to get into that again because I don't want like a lawsuit or something. <laughs> but uh, things could have definitely been better. Like it just seems like, and it's not just this brand or not this, uh, it's not this corporation. It's just, it seems like to be a Thing happening everywhere restaurants um big box stores even like mom and pop places there just seems to be like ever since the pandemic it's like okay well now we don't have to prioritize cleanliness and if anything things are kind of like worse than ever before it's like before it was mandatory and now it's like well since no one's looking we can just Anyway, they like that's why they say some countries are like so clean. Like I can't remember if it's Korea or Japan or but some places like they really make an effort and they have high standard when it comes to that cuz they probably realize that those types of things literally make people sick and they don't want people to be sick. They want people to be working and contributing to the economy and and they care, but um this is bad. I realize the irony of coming to the beach and doing your makeup like this extreme is that all the health nuts are at the beach, they're organic girlies with no makeup, and then there's me looking like <laughs> I'm ready for a drag show. <laughs> and nothing's wrong with a drag show. I love drag, but um, I always just do too much. <laughs> With my eyes, it's all or nothing with me in so many ways in my life. But anyway, it looks kind of not as good as yesterday, but probably better than the day before that that I did my makeup on video. But anyway, so back to... I just got bad creases in there. Oh no, I'm taking it right off. So back to my list. Um, I don't know if I said again the van's conditions, but let's just say like, you know, some things are out of the company's control. Like if people are smoking in the vans, but 
I've heard from some companies that they do take smoking in the vans very seriously and you know they'll actually there will be consequences to those actions and then there's some companies that just don't care it's all about profit and just getting the parcels to the doors and not about the safety of the drivers I guess so safety well-being it doesn't matter if it's they smoked in the van they're not in the van anymore smoke has residue and ash and you're in the van all day that's where you're eating breathing drinking water everything like you have the air blowing well the ac blowing well that's or you know even just your windows down like that's getting in your lungs and and some people are allergic or have reactions or like me it's a major trigger so yeah the van's conditions like if they let things like cleanliness go well then are they keeping up with the oil changes are they keeping up with maintenance are they keeping up with the tire rotation are they keeping up with like the air in the tires like like uh those are just things you want to know and for example like the one of the vans was like locked on the inside so it's like you couldn't get out so that was really scary like they just some things just plain weren't safe and it didn't seem like it was a priority we'll just say that and so so the five negatives i said the 10 hour four day a week physically demanding road rage van conditions and the last was lonely so of course whether you really are a people person or you're not um even for the person who really doesn't has a lot of social anxiety or doesn't enjoy interacting with people like outside of their friends and family or whatnot it still can be lonely at times like it's you are trapped in your head so for me I you know I do have trauma in my past and so when I was um like with my new job it's similar but it's busier and so I'm not in my head when I'm doing that job I'm like really focused on the job because there's a lot more to it but with this one it, like before with delivery like just parcels specifically it was like a bit to there's just a bit too much time in the day where like sometimes it was great it was like oh I'm you know I'm singing and I'm like being really creative like sometimes my brain will just instantly come up with like songs and and stuff and or whatever like I really I don't use the word bored very much I like I don't really believe in that because I enjoy my own company and I'm always entertained and I can always find something to do and I'm always like thinking of questions and googling like my questions and like being on social media and seeing what my you know what people are up to that I follow but I just never I pretty much have removed bored out of my vocabulary <laughs> but um why did I mention that? <laughs> oh, just it might not be for everyone in that way because a lot of people do use the word bored. I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. And well, it is a pretty boring, straightforward, easy job where you're just going, you're dropping off the thing, going, going, going. Like you're going to be outside, see beautiful sights and sceneries and yards and homes and decor on the outside and you get those short interactions with customers where they might make small talk or they might just say, simply say thank you and it does make you feel good and well I mean if you're delivering where I live like there's some just stunning beautiful places like whether you're in Brentwood or or Dallas or just somewhere where it's like beautiful farms and nature and mountains and everything it's just stunning so but you know I couldn't imagine doing delivery I don't think I'd be able to do it if I were living in some places like you guys are living in places where it's like cold pretty much half the year or you get really extreme winters like 
or I don't think I'd be able to do that because one of the reasons I moved away from Manitoba to BC is because I couldn't stand the cold. Like it's something to do with part of my disability. Like I get really cold sometimes where it almost feels like on the verge of hypothermia or something or losing heat and and you know like with certain jobs you can't be wearing like full mittens or full get up the whole time you have to be mobile and you have to be on your phone like getting the information or getting the gps or what have you so so yeah anyway um but yeah, that was it. That was my complete list. So five positives. Money, independence, um, fresh air, sunshine, easy, good for some disabled people. And the five negatives, 10 hours, four days a week, physically demanding, road rage, van conditions, and can be lonely at times. So you decide for you if it's good, but those are kinds of things like I probably like, <laughs> I really strongly believe after these last few years, I've really realized that people don't really have a clue unless they've experienced it. So whether it comes to trauma, past trauma, or even, even positive things, like whether it's like, um, certain industries, but the, what I've realized is that people just have no clue when it comes to certain jobs, even like they think, Oh, that'd be fun. Like when I told people where I worked, they're like, Oh, that'd be awesome. Cause it has like a good reputation and people are like, Oh, getting your parcels. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so fun. But they don't see the full picture. Like they don't see how it could be hard on you or they don't see that it could be lonely or could be dangerous at times or or <laughs> like going to the one guy used to say it's like going up the stairs of heaven and then down to the stairs of hell <laughs> like on those really really hot days where you're having to carry like this 50 pound box up 50 or 100 stairs and then all the way down because some of the homes out here are like really big and mansion styles I work I uh, delivered to some pretty cool areas, like uh, pretty much the biggest and probably the most expensive mansions. I haven't even looked into the cost, but I used to deliver to like Uplands. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so yeah, I delivered to Uplands and there was a time where I literally got trapped in the gate because they let me in with the code and then on the way out they didn't press the code so I had to go back to the door and I was just annoyed <laughs> and there was a time where they I don't know if they were home so they but the code went to their phone so they like let me in and on the way back to the gate the gate's closing and I thought oh great <laughs> like I wasn't that slow like holy <laughs> but it was funny because the next time I was there I made a joke with the guy and we just laughed about it like you're telling me to hurry it up or what? But yeah, I kind of, I did like seeing, you know, the customers and having those short, like getting sh like the customers having that appreciation. But then there is the other, so the other ass, the other side of things where there's some people where, oh, like one of my worst experience was, and this was like in the midst of summer when it's like so hot and, um, I come to this house and I have the parcel and two people are chatting. I don't know if they're the owners or who's the owner, who's what, or anyway, regardless, the lady's just like, oh yeah, leave it over there. Not hello. Thank you. Nothing. Just like uh, just a service, like regardless of who you are, like if you're, um, somebody's butler or you're the waiter or you're, um, the taxi driver, like if you're doing a service for someone, whether you're paying for the service or not, like you should still be saying thank you and using manners. Like 
for some people just to kind of treat you like you're nothing in that way. Like, oh yeah, just leave it there. Not thank you or hope you have a good day or it's just like pretty disgusting. Like I noticed that here more than Manitoba. Like there are some people here who kind of, um, they must have had a really good life and been given things on a silver platter or whatever the saying is like they just lack a little bit of um awareness when it comes to like kindness and using manners and like what I'm saying about people being really impatient at times like there's some roads where it's really narrow and the van's quite wide I mean not too bad but anyway those are just some of the negative things again but um Yeah, I just, like, it says a lot about a person when they treat the waiter bad. Like, you know what I mean? But then it's the same for any industry. Like, if you're tr treating the barista that way or the person at the front desk at the hotel, like, whatever it is, you should always be, like, using manners and saying thank you. And some people just, uh, they're, I don't know. <laughs> in la la land or like there's no excuse for that like people will say oh well you don't know what they're going through and whatever it doesn't matter what you're going for through you don't treat others like that like what so you're gonna make them feel bad because you feel bad that's silly like you can really brighten your delivery person's day just by like saying thank you you don't even have to give them gifts and candy and chips and stuff some people leave like like that is awesome if you do that but they're and bottled water especially but um yeah just using manners and saying thank you goes a long way but anyway I think that's all for today so uh until next time